Dear viewers, you are my greatest inspiration. Your kind words of appreciation motivate me to keep making more videos. There are so many other key topics associated with Indicatrix, that I had to make several subsidiary chapters preparatory to the prime topic. Crystal Optics is the branch of optics, that describes the behavior of electromagnetic waves in anisotropic media, such as, in crystals light behaves differently depending on the direction of light propagation. The characteristic phenomena of crystals that are studied in crystal optics include birefringence and polarization of light. I can proudly say, that the phenomenon of double refraction was first observed in crystals by Danish scientist Rasmus Bartholin in 1669. This was the beginning of crystal optics. Absorption and emission of light by crystals are studied in crystal spectroscopy. students frequently ask how to memorize this confusing concept Please watch my previous videos first. You will find the links in the description below. First, a few words on ellipsoid would be appropriate, right? Yes, how about that? This illustration presents geometric definition of an ellipsoid. A, B, and C, denote the three principal semi-axes. Here, we are going to describe a position on an ellipsoid in spherical coordinates or polar coordinates, which is a system of curvilinear coordinates. First, let's draw the ellipsoid. Then, here are the X, Y, and Z axes. All right. This red dot would be the position point under our study. This pink line represents the radius, which is the distance of the point from the origin. Phi is the polar angle or zenith angle with respect to the positive side of the Z axis. Theta is the azimuthal angle, shown in green color. 
it's in the xy plane and with respect to the y axis. E denotes eccentricity. Please watch my online video lesson on eccentricity beforehand. The link is in the description below. Please note, that the plane sections normal to one axis are circles, and all the other plane sections are ellipses.
for crystals with certain symmetries, such as, a single axis of threefold, fourfold, or sixfold symmetry, two of the refractive indices are equal. Such crystals are called uniaxial. The z-axis in these crystals is the optic axis. Crystals, in which three principal refractive indices are different, are termed as biaxial. at the interface between air and glass. At the interface between air and calcite. Now, Let's see some cool illustrations of light bending and slowing down. In this case, light is speeding up as well as bending away. In this case, light is slowing down, as well as closing in. Prelude to the prime topic, two associated subsections are called for. Polarization versus optic axis, and optic axis versus direction of propagation.
four circumstances, it's a rather complex combination of polarized and polarized, isotropic and isotropic, parallel oblique. Isn't it? First, let's see combination number one. Unpolarized incident light and isotropic medium. Now, let's see combination number two. Unpolarized incident light and anisotropic medium. Now, let's explore combination number 3. Polarized light beam entering anisotropic material parallel to the optic axis. Next, let's explore combination number 4. Unpolarized light beam entering anisotropic material oblique to the optic axis. We see here, polarized light wave entering parallel to the optic axis emerges as coaxial trajectories, hence no double refraction takes place. We see here, polarized light wave entering perpendicular to the optic axis emerges as two coincident rays, having dissimilar path lengths and dissimilar faces. We see here, polarized light wave entering oblique to the optic axis emerges as two divergent rays, hence double refraction occurs.
a crystal with a cubic lattice, has the same refractive index on all directions. In an isotropic material, the wave surface forms a sphere. That's not the case for the non-cubic crystals. As you saw, it was precisely uniform no matter which direction you measure. Here, it's apparently even on the deep blue plane. However, along the z-direction, the refractive index would be either greater or lesser. Next you will see what it results in. Such wave divergence and relative magnitudes consequently give rise to positive and negative birefringence. Here I show you the illustrations. All right. So, how about an optics?
for crystals with certain symmetries, such as, a single axis of threefold, fourfold, or sixfold symmetry, two of the refractive indices are equal. Such crystals are called uniaxial. The z-axis in these crystals is the optic axis. Crystals, in which three principal refractive indices are different, are termed as biaxial. Now, think of an index ellipsoid, where the principal axes are along the x, y and z axes, and the principal refractive indices are given by n1, n2 and n3. The optical properties of the crystal correspond to the directions of the principal axes, and the values of the principal refractive indices. The ordinary wave surface is a sphere, and the extraordinary wave surface is an ellipsoid of revolution. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, 